let's shift gears a little. Uh, what brought uh, Atelier to the KD project? Well, uh, as I said at the beginning, <laughs> I was in this another printer host project with some people that we didn't uh, went well. And back then, Patrick and Chris was joining the team. And because of the conflict with the previous people that I was working on, we started to uh, recreate Atelier. Uh, Sif, uh, Sif, uh, I'm so used to calling him Sif, that's hard to go out, Chris. Uh, but Chris, uh, uh, which, uh, Chris uh, suggested his name to be Atelier, and we changed the name from the previous project to this one. And. A couple of things that I liked back then was that in six months, six months working with them, uh, we did uh, what we couldn't, uh, what we haven't done in one year on the previous project with the previous person that I was working on, and that was very uh, amazing for me because I was in kind of bad situations at the time, so work with them like a good team already inside the KDE because the previous project is always, always inside KDE, so we just change the name and create a new uh, new, new repositories. It was very good for me back then. And I'm very proud of the, of the work that we have done so far. I'm still like a little sad because we didn't launch Atelier yet but we are working on that but we was we were already inside the kde so that's that's kind of the resume of the story yeah i don't think there was ever a point there was maybe a week before we even had a kde repo open it was yeah really there was no other choice but being a kde project basically yes uh at core, at core is pure QT because we needed to ship to all the platforms quite quickly so I can like it. Because one thing that Atelier has is that it's multi platform because it's written with Qt, so it runs on Windows, Linux, and OS X. But uh, back then, uh, comp uh, back then in 2016, uh, compile, uh, compile KDE applications for other platforms was kind of tricky, so we need to ship at the core with the test client to my friends and for our connections to test quickly and give you feedback. So at core is pure QT, and then Atelier is already already has the current interface already has some KDE libraries to help us. So and today we already have a continuous integration delivery system that builds Atelier for all platforms. I think that we have a couple issues on OS X because of the paths, but it's quite a small things because we don't have OS X people to test, so we need help on that. But today we can ship Atelier on our alpha, 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 alpha version <laughs> to people to test it. And it's quite that to me today. Yeah, a lot of history. A lot of time, guys. <laughs> uh, I saw in the Atelier site that you are shipping the software in the app image format. Mm -hmm. Do you intend to distribute this this package in the new uh, package system like uh, Snaps or Flatpaks? Well, wow. we actually have flat packs for longer than we've had an app image. It just yeah. isn't well advertised. You can right now uh, install from the KDE flat pack repo, Atelier Daily, uh, the daily build. Yeah. The thing is, is that Atelier, Atelier website is kind of outdated because the what you can download there is a 1.0 version of that core that w go, was out a year ago. And it is on my to-do list because I was the one that made the website to make a new website pointed to our master's building, uh, builds and the flat packs and app image. 
during academy last year i was with the guy from app mage and they joined the channel to help chris to build a atelier maybe because we just have a decor but that goes that went with a few issues that i don't know if it's today was solved or not yeah but... there were some slight dependency issues that uh just weren't cooperating for some reason then Inside KDE Binary Factory, we have the nightly builds for Flatpak, Windows, OX, OSG, and Linux now because we are not ship. I don't, we have just the builds to see if everything's okay, but we don't have the package uh, yep. for download. Yeah. So, uh, about the app image, uh, there is a tool called Linux Deploy Cute. Uh, it's uh, a bit old already, and these two uh, provides the solution to deploy Qt for uh, Linux systems or Unix systems in general. And with that, another guy started to write a new tool called uh, Linux Deploy that is not uh, it should not focus only on Qt uh, programs, but any project that you want to ship for for Linux in general. So we started to use Linux Deploy Qt, and after that, uh, the second guy uh, started to write the second two to, to to accomplish the deployment. And we are talk of him to to use his two and to make more simple to create the app image deployment. But also there is the KDE infrastructure that provides, uh, as Chris said, has Chris said uh, the Snap package that you can find in Discovery on the KDE store and flat also pack. the daily builds. Flat pack. Uh, the flat pack, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of different uh, deployment I systems. But I, don't, I don't think I've tried to make snaps yet. Yeah. All right. If I'm not crazy, Patrick said in our last talk that some companies are using the Atelier project. Uh, Patrick, please correct me if I'm wrong. Could you tell a little more about that? I think Sif is more inside than me. Probably he can sell better. I mean, there's there's some companies definitely that take interest in it, but I don't know of anything official at this point, really. Yeah, well, I, I, we can we can see some development. We can see some forks. We can see that some people yeah. are are doing some task development or some personal development to see how it goes, and uh, and we believe that in, in some time we can we probably will see uh, a product shipping with Atelier uh, AT Core. Yeah, uh, uh, the thing is that Atelier uh, is like a lot under the radar you know we don't talk much about it because we still don't have uh, at least this is my opinion okay uh, we don't have a good project to ship what I see on the events that to the print uh, after the printing that I go that people want to have this server to control the printer you want to control on small devices and today we don't have that with Atelier so yeah, uh, this week I was working on some mockups for small small screens, and I now have people for for the visual design group of KDE helping us to try to build these new screens that we will use to build a new interface for Atelier using Kirigami and other QT KDE technologies to try to produce uh, build this project that the people want also the industries and we don't talk about at atelier is i need the speaker here because these guys don't go to events to talk about stuff so i have like a couple talks about atelier three talks only but the people that watch this talk is not all into the printing like so we are a project under the radar some people know us and I hope that when we have a good project, we I will start, I plan to start to talk more about to go to more events and maybe go to a make a fan on US or something like that to talk about it and try to show this product. Today we 
don't have a, a good project, so I don't think that I should be talking about it uh, be, because I don't have what people want. Okay, okay. You are a growing project that's becoming mature, but you yeah. you didn't we get there have, yet. Yeah, we need a, a little more miles on the road to, to have a good product. Okay, this this was my next question. What are the biggest difficulties of the Atelier project today? But I think you kind of answered that. I, I don't yeah. know if you have something else to say. Yeah, uh, the thing is, uh, we need more people to test Articore and its plugins because we need people with the... We, we support today six kind of firmware and we were only able to test to two or three tops. And we need more people to test the others because we are te we the other firmware I think that Steve uh, tests on Arduino just simulating the firmware with, so we don't have the actual printer to test it. So we need more people to do that and people to use it uh, and test it on Windows and OS, OS X because we just work on Linux uh, development. So I need two people to test that, give feedback. I hope on the next couple of weeks we'll have uh, some more caps for the new screen so people to give feedback on us that too because we are an open source project. We need people to help us to get there, you know, to give their opinion, to give the what they think, how things should be, what what should be we doing, what should not. I think that the architecture of the atelier gives us that power because uh, has a core is orientated to plugins because anyone can write the uh, compatibility plugins to uh, to control a printer. On atelier, we have the same goal, so. Atelier will be shipped with the uh, some the basic and a little bit more features, and Atelier at least the new version that we are planning and discussing is that will also be orientated to plugins. So people will be also writing plugins to load on Atelier to have more features and more power. So is that we need these people to help us if they are interested? We have our. Facebook like that page <laughs> because I don't post much there. But we are, we are very active on our Telegram channels. That is KD Atelier for people in English and KD Atelier Brazil for people in Portuguese. And we need these people to come to us and help us if they are interested and help us to become, I think, I don't the best software for a printer host for 3D printing. So we need to people to help us, give us information that we can use and turn it in uh, good stuff, in good features and good experience and all that. There's a lot of different kinds of setups for 3D printers. So um, there's probably 10 different kinds of boards. There's easily the six firmwares that we support with probably a dozen different configurations available between them all. So it's hard for us to test everything by ourselves. I keep, um, I keep a box which has some baseboards that I can flash stuff to. Plus I have uh, two printers that I can print on, but it's not nearly enough hardware testing to test the, uh, the low level stuff. Yeah, you usually uh, use these different firmers and need to flash the 3D printer with different <laughs> firmware versions. Uh, yeah, because... I got a brown box. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we have the firmers and we have the difference between firmware versions. Uh, as an example, we have Hepatia and we have Marlin. They both are different versions. And from uh, Marlin, 1.0 to Marlin 1. something, there are new features and things that we need to test, make sure that we can provide this feature for new firmers also. And, and this is something that we try to catch up and we try to integrate with AT Car uh, as soon as we can. All right. So, do you think, uh, aside of the help from the users, uh, the feedback you need to improve? 
the, uh, your software, do you think the project needs uh, other people to be part of, or do you think the, the goal uh, and the, the help you need now is this feedback? Yeah, I think that from the developer side, we have a couple hands. Chris is the guy that is working more. Patrick and I are deep on, in work and some things, and we are working. And at least for me, I don't have a 3D printer, so I can't do so much things. So I hope to change that in the, until the middle of this year. But uh, we need to people to give feedback to us. And if they want to, to contribute to code, they are very welcome. But we, we think that people can bring feedback to us. Because most of the users are on Windows, for example, and we need the Windows users to give feedback for us. Um, last year, I was at the, the DevOps conference in Sao Paulo, and I made a talk about Atelier in a track, and a guy that was there also to present a talk about 3D printing, used the Atelier a couple days that after that presentation, and he loved the program. And he keeps asking, if there's new filter, if there are new things, because he wants to test, and it's a Windows user, but he won't, uh, he won't cont contribute to code. And so we have people interested. I think that we need to just to engage them more. And we need new people because it's a, it's a complicated work when you don't have much time to engage people, to bring things, to test things, and you don't want to be like, Oh, please, please test that for me, please, please. I need people that are really interested to contribute to the project and give a little bit of the, uh, invest a little bit of their time on this. I right. think any open source project can always use more developers. Yeah. <laughs> developers are good for everything, and the more we have, the more problems we can solve faster. And besides developers, we also need... Uh, guys that could could give insights about craft user interface can create mockups and help us to give a better user experience because as programmers we know what we want but in a user experience perspective uh, sometimes it's better to have a, a professional in the area yeah yeah if you look at the test GUI it, it works well but it might not be exactly what anyone wants to use permanently. And Atelier is getting there. We are working on it. Right, so guys, uh, I will leave this channel open. I don't know what uh, more I could ask you without going deep in the technical area. But if you want to say something more, I, I will leave this channel open for you to say anything you, you need to say, anything that I forgot to, to ask. Uh, so, it's up to you. Well, people, if you are watching us and like the, the idea to contribute to us, you can find us on atelier.ke.org. And there you can find our Telegram and Facebook pages, I think, and our mail list. But the ma major communication is on Telegram, is KDE Atelier. On IRC is hashtag KDE. Uh, I forgot. Line <laughs> Atelier. I will put yeah. the, all those links in the description of this yeah. video. Okay. But please, uh, if you are interested to know how this thing, uh, how Atelier will end up, please join our channel on Telegram and help us and watch what will come. Uh, I, I, will, I will talk in, in Portuguese now because it's for everybody. Uh, okay. Então, uh, o que eu posso dizer é que fica o convite para todo mundo que queira testar e todo mundo que queira conversar sobre impressoras 3D no nosso canal do Telegram. Uh, temos uh, o canal em português e temos o canal em inglês. Uh, ambos os canais a gente fala de coisas técnicas, a gente fala de coisas uh, sobre o próprio ateliê em si. E tiramos também dúvidas sobre impressoras 3D para pessoas que queiram conhecer, as pessoas que queiram comprar, as pessoas que gostariam de testar o software e se interessar mais na área. E, além disso, fica o convite é, de todos de dar uma olhada no projeto ou na comunidade do KDE. 
é, dá uma olhada nos softwares, dá uma olhada na, na, na comunidade em si. É, todas as pessoas são bem-vindas, todo, todas as discussões são é, bem recebidas, desde que respeitem uh, as regras do canal e o código é, de conduta. E o código de conduta. São coisas bem simples, mas que ajudam a gente a manter a credibilidade, a honra e a saúde do grupo. E muita gente participa e faz parte do grupo por causa disso. E, além disso, fica o, o convite também de todas as pessoas que gostariam de programar, ou gostariam de aprender a programar, ou gostariam de entrar no ramo de programação, de encontrar um projeto que goste, é, é, encontrar uh, algo que gostaria de aprender e contribuir com, é, do projeto KDE, e participe via lista de e-mails, via chat, via IRC, via Telegram, que é outra coisa que a pessoa gostaria de participar porque ajuda muito no aprendizado e acredito que ajuda muito na, para a pessoa também. Realmente. E resultado para a comunidade. É, realmente trabalhar com software livre muda as vidas. Eu sou prova viva disso. Eu estarei na Campus Party mês que vem, uh, no palco de carreiras ou algo do tipo, que eu vou falar dessa experiência realmente no software livre e vou falar do ateliê, vou falar das coisas. Então, assim, quem tiver... Quem aí dos seus inscritos estiverem indo para Campus Paris estão convidados. Vai ser no último dia da Campus, no sábado, meio-dia. Estarei lá. Eu já estarei lá desde na sexta-feira de noite, assim. Então, quem quiser conversar sobre impressão 3D e tal, manda um oi. É, informações sobre mim, vocês podem achar no laís147, laís.com.org. Aí vocês acham informação lá, link, é, LinkedIn, Telegram, todas as informações. E estarei lá aberta, assim, para bater papo sobre impressão 3D, ateliê e software livre, KDE, assim, sou militante do KDE, toda a oportunidade que eu tenho de falar sobre essa comunidade maravilhosa eu falo, porque foi aquele bendito dia que eu sentei do lado do Tomás e fiquei reclamando da vida que minha carreira deu uma bela guinada e hoje o ateliê tá aí para provar isso. Então, assim, realmente venham contribuir. Não precisa só ser programador, não, também tem tradução, tem ativa... Ser ativista com a comunidade De escrever reportagens, esse tipo de coisa E a comunidade do KDE No Brasil é a KDE Brasil No Telegram, vocês podem também entrar lá Que é, todo mundo é super receptivo Na hora de ajudar e orientar para contribuir com a comunidade de alguma forma Obrigado também pelo convite Vartroy que isso. É a minha forma de tentar Ajudá-los também uh, Chris, would like to say something For the subscriber of this channel? Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I will say some words in Portuguese too, okay? Uh, My Portuguese is non-existent, so I got nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. Bom, é, eu, eu queria primeiro direcionar isso para a galera que está assistindo, né? Primeiro que, pô, tá aí muitas muitas pessoas às vezes me perguntam, ah, como contribuir com os projetos? Essa é mais uma opção, mais uma, um projeto bacana, que pode ser muito útil, tanto para o usuário corporativo quanto o usuário residencial como vocês disseram, é um projeto que está ainda em estado de é, crescimento né? ainda não atingiu a maturidade que vocês querem, é, que vocês desejam, então acho que é uma boa oportunidade para quem curte esse tipo de coisa, entrar no projeto ajudar é, se a pessoa quiser também contribuir financeiramente, ou a Laís está precisando de uma impressora 3D, então já sabe para onde que pode direcionar os seus fundos. Uh, porque é importante, não dá para você fazer um projeto só, é, sei lá, meio que tentando né, achar a solução de alguma coisa que você não tem em mãos para poder testar. Porque é o que acontece, muita gente quer a solução pronta, perfeita, funcionando, mas esquece de todas as barreiras técnicas que existem e elas são muitas, não, não parece assim na superfície, mas elas são muitas, e são muitas mesmo, entra hardware, entra programação e entra várias outras coisas. Então assim, é, é mais um projeto que as pessoas podem contribuir, como a Laís falou, não precisa ser programador, você pode ajudar na tradução, na divulgação, escrevendo artigos, sei lá, é, participando da, do grupo dos canais, é, ajudando a Laís também a estar aí frente, frente a frente com a galera para apresentar o projeto, acho que também é uma, uma oportunidade e eu gostaria assim, de agradecer imensamente né, 
a, to, a todos vocês por, por terem vindo aqui hoje nesse Hangout, falar um pouquinho sobre o projeto Atelier. Uh, I would like to say thanks to Chris too. It's a very pleasure for me to have you here in my channel. Thank you very much for having me. <risos> então é isso galera, espero que vocês tenham gostado desse vídeo é, esse foi uma conversa com a Laís com o Patrick, com o Chris do Projeto Atelier nos vemos no próximo vídeo, um grande abraço para todos muito obrigada aí galera até a próxima Super